Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. So welcome to Eco Ask Why. As part of our Women in Engineering series, I'm excited to sit down and talk with Lauren Arnold, who is the Health Systems Engineer at Duke University Health Systems. So welcome, Lauren. Thank you, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Oh, we're going to have some fun. I'm excited to talk with you, you know, with your background and things you, for our listeners. Lauren just finished engineering school. She's starting on her journey. So maybe help us, Lauren, by getting to start off with, by just talking through how engineering school went and, and, and your personal journey to where you're at right now. Sure. So I'm originally from Virginia. So I decided to kind of journey out of state and go to NC State to study engineering. Um, so I started right out of high school, and I originally applied to um, join the biomedical engineering department. And so after about my first semester, I decided biomedical was not necessarily something that I was super interested in long term. So I switched over to industrial engineering, which is where I stayed for the remainder of my college career. Um, through industrial engineering, I also got a minor in leadership, which helped kind of round out those core STEM classes with a little bit more of your soft skills and leadership skills. So while I was at NC State, I was involved in a lot of different organizations that really helped shape my career and my future goals within engineering. So I was a part of our Society of Women Engineers program. I was a part of our Society of Manufacturing Engineers program, our Women and Minority Engineering program, along with Symphony and a couple of other extracurriculars. Through NC State, I was able to get two internships in a co-op, I worked for ADB in Virginia, John Deere in Iowa, and John Deere Hitachi in North Carolina. So afterwards, I was able to kind of decide on which industry I wanted to go to, and I decided to merge my love of data analytics with a little bit more of a service industry rather than manufacturing, and that's how I landed in healthcare um, now that I've graduated. I started a couple weeks ago, and I'm really excited to learn more about this industry and kind of how it correlates and also the differences between healthcare and manufacturing. Cool. Very cool. Well, you, you got an interesting story. So the, the biomedical, you figured out you didn't like that. Then you made that, that shift. So the leadership minor, I'm not familiar with that. So are those uh, business type classes? So the leadership minor in the state is a little bit of a smaller, I guess, program than some of the other minors. There are some more business-minded classes, but a lot of them are more service-minded. So one of my favorite courses that I took through this minor was actually a naval science ROTC course. I wasn't aware of it at the time, um, but it ended up being such an impactful course just learning about how the military structures their leadership style versus kind of how the civilian mindset is. Um, So we do a lot of learning about different leadership models, learning about your leadership style, and how you can really leverage your strengths to then support a team while you go and work on projects or work within groups. Okay, cool. Now, the internships that you had, you had a couple, it sounds like you, ABB and then two at John Deere, and, and they were separate John Deere facilities? Yes. So my second John Deere, or my first John Deere internship was in Dubuque, Iowa, working on construction and forestry equipment. My second John Deere internship was in Kernersville, North Carolina, so a little bit closer to home. And there we were manufacturing excavators. Very cool. So the one in Iowa, did you have to, was that for a full semester? Did you have to to go live out there, I'm assuming? It was actually just for a summer. So I moved in May and came back to school in August. Okay. What did you enjoy the most about your internships? I loved learning about the different functions of engineering within large companies. So many people might think, I mean, Say a mechanical engineer is only going to, you know, design this one component within the larger organization, but different manufacturing jobs and different engineering disciplines can be so cross-functional across an organization. So they can work within finance, they can work within leadership management, they can work on the physical builds themselves. And being able to see that as a student, that I wasn't going down one specific path and that I really could broaden where I ended up 
in the long run was really interesting to see, along with just meeting some really neat people and learning their journeys about how they ended up in the positions that they are now. No doubt. I mean, it's so many different paths you can take, you know, through engineering. And like you mentioned, that network, you're building that network through that internship. Now, the, the ABB plant, is that the one in Virginia? Yes, that's the one in my hometown in Virginia. So I worked in their quality department right after my freshman year of school. And that was probably one of the biggest learning experiences for me coming from school for my freshman year, not having a ton of engineering experience, but really being able to see that industry firsthand. That is a cool plant too. I've been, I've personally been all through that plant and and seeing those large uh, medium voltage transformers being made. Uh, Some really, really neat equipment that's in there. Mm -hmm, For sure. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you for, for expanding on that for us. You know, for the women that may be listening right now, Lauren, is there some advice you'd like to share with them about your journey through engineering, you know, things that you've learned so far? Sure. So I guess the first non-academic related piece of advice that I would give to any student coming into engineering or early college in general is to take courses and do projects that you're really passionate about that have absolutely nothing to do with your academic career. So for me, I loved playing music. So I played in the Raleigh Civic Symphony for four years. And for me, that was the perfect kind of brain break every week to relax and reset from those core projects that you're doing within your career and a great way to meet people outside of just your department or your academic organization. The second thing I would say is to focus on your end goals. So kind of how I said earlier, you can have many different paths depending on what your engineering discipline is. But if you figure out what job or what area you want to work in in the end, it doesn't really matter what engineering discipline you choose as a student because you can usually get to that point through pretty much every major. So, for example, if you want to go design shoes at Nike, you could do industrial engineering and you could work in the manufacturing and the systems overview. You could also do um, computer science and learn about their um, all of their network and IT systems or even do textile or chemical engineering or material science and learn about the physical materials that go into those shoes. So that's just kind of one simple example of why you should always kind of look to your end goal first and backwards engineer your way to how to get there that best suits your goals. Great point. I uh, I love that advice, you know, because there's so many different ways you can go about it, right? Mm -hmm, For sure. Very cool. Very cool. So how about – some of the resources, you, you, you're you just coming through engineering school right now. What have been some things that you've used to help you along your way? At NC State specifically, we have an incredible women and minority engineering program. So for me, that was a wonderful place to get involved and meet some really amazing engineers and really amazing faculty. They were also the ones who helped me be able to further my love of STEM outreach and K-12 education. So I was able to travel to Kigali, Rwanda, and I was actually about to lead another trip to Rwanda with this program to then teach K-12 STEM outreach in secondary schools in Africa. So they have been just an incredible resource. They do so many things to retain their students, get their students involved, and really make sure that their students are fully supported through their time at NC State. Another great resource that I think any student can take and take advantage of while they're in school is getting to know their professors and classmates. Many times professors don't have students in their office because students just don't ask questions. So not being afraid to go up and ask those questions to get the resources you need and make sure that you get the support that you need as a student. Um, professors are there and classmates are there to help you get to your goal. So studying with friends, making study groups, going to tutoring, all of those things are there at your disposal. So you should definitely take advantage of those. No doubt, Lauren. Now, now you mentioned the Women and Minority Engineering Program at State. What can what else can you tell us about that? I mean, how often did that group get together? Just any details there? Sure. So the Women and Minority Engineering Program at NC State does not necessarily have set meeting times. So they support pretty much any engineering club or organization that falls within that category. So, for example, the Society of Women Engineers has a really great partnership with the Women and Minority Engineering Program. And we call them WMEP. They also do different um, events for incoming freshmen. So they do something called Escape Camp, which is where they bring in a set amount of incoming female engineers. 
and they stay for a week the summer before their freshman year, and they're able to get to know faculty, get to know campus, and create a smaller cohesive group that kind of sticks with you those four years and make sure that when you come your freshman year, you have familiar faces and you kind of know your ro- know the ropes before you get here. I got you. So that's kind of like a, a initial mentorship opportunity for those those up it and coming. Is. Okay. It is. Very cool. I mean, so speaking of mentors, has it had there? I'm sure there are probably some through the WMEP program. Anybody stand mm-hmm. out there that that you would like to recognize as helping you throughout your college career? Yes, of course. So the director of the Women in Minority Engineering Program is Dr. Laura Bottomley. She's an electrical engineer who has been an incredible support system and an incredible mentor for me personally. Um, she's been incredible also in supporting my love of STEM education because that's also something she's very passionate about. So I've looked up to her for the past four years and made sure that kind of the things that I mold my career goals after are things that she similarly does. So things like making sure that all students have equal opportunity to STEM education, making sure that all of the inclusion and things like that are put into place at NC State and the programs that we run to make sure that everyone feels welcome and that everyone can do engineering if that's something that they're truly passionate about. Right. Sounds like a, a, a great leader and, and person of inspiration that you had to work with there. That's that's outstanding. So if you, had, sure. if you had something, Lauren, you're, you're coming into industry and there's all different types of perceptions out there. If you had a chance to to debunk something that maybe you went through as a a woman engineer through the engineering school, uh, what would that be? So I think that it's really important to make sure that when you are interviewing, when you're getting hired, or even just being accepted into NC State or into any college or academic career, that you don't feel like you're getting that just because you're female. I think it's very important that recruiters and faculty make sure that they're hiring or they're recruiting the best students or the best faculty possible, not necessarily based off whether they're female, whether they're male, whatever they identify as, but that they're getting the most qualified candidate. And that's something that I think in the future, we put so much emphasis on hiring only women or only hiring candidates that fit within certain brackets, that in the end, it's going to be hard, in my opinion, to then kind of shift that mindset into, I didn't get hired because I was a woman. I got hired because I'm an incredible student or I have this GPA or I have this experience. So that's something that I think we should be careful about in the future. And we don't want that to become something that is a common myth within female and engineering. Um, even now, I've seen that kind of hinted at in a couple of different ways, which is something that I think is avoidable and a myth that we shouldn't continue. Hey, I'm with you. I, I, I wrote while you were talking awesome because you're awesome. That's, I mean, that's why you get hired, you know, and and don't ever lose sight of that. Right. I mean, so hats off to you. You reckon that you're early in your career and you're recognizing this. So, uh, you got great things ahead of you. Very, very excited for you. What do you get excited about when you look at the future and projects and things you get to get to, to potentially work on? What excites you the most? Personally, I love data analytics. I love being able to look at a data set, kind of figure out where the problems are, where the opportunities lie, go out and implement solutions. But then the best part in the end is seeing where the implementation that you put into place, where that really plays out and helps other people or helps fix the problem. So being in healthcare, I'm really excited, kind of just getting started to be able to complete projects that really make a future impact on patient outcomes and be able to positively impact patient experiences within healthcare. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, Since I haven't been working for very long, only a couple weeks, not something that I've been able to personally do a lot of currently, but definitely something that I am super excited for in the future. Oh, it's coming. No doubt about it. And and, I mean, that that tie to data analytics, you got it. You have figured it out and you're going to do wonderful things. And, you know, when you think back through maybe your, your internships, what were some of those moments where you felt like you were really just in that moment where you're, you're enjoying what you're doing? Anything stand out from looking back from some of those past work experiences? I think at one of my internships specifically, I did a lot of data analytics, like I was mentioning previously, but being able to implement the solutions that I had kind of designed and then go out and speak with the technicians, the operators, the welders, 
and see how it's directly impacting their work and making them more efficient and their work safer and their work more comfortable and just all around more enjoyable for them to be able to complete their tasks. That was something that I got a lot of joy out of knowing that I was able to support them and helping them get their job done in a safer, more efficient manner. Right. That's great. That is wonderful. So, so Lauren, let's, let's take a, a turn and, and talk outside of engineering for a minute. So <laughs> to, to share with our listeners, they, they love to, to learn more. What's some hobbies that you have, things you like to do in your spare time? One of the biggest things that I was involved in in school outside of engineering was K-12 education. So I love being able to go into school systems or have students come to campus and really be able to break down big, complex, seemingly scary problems into bite-sized pieces that they're able to digest and really learn about and learn deeply and enjoy it. So I was able to be involved in a couple of different organizations from the Future City Middle School Engineering Competition, STEM Night, the Marbles Children's Museum in downtown Raleigh. Um, and being able to travel and bring those STEM education opportunities closer to the students. So that was something that I personally loved and loved being able to be involved in. Well, let me dig right here for a second. The Future City and the STEM Nights. Can you tell us a little more about what that was and, and the things you did there? Because it sounds like a great opportunity to, to help. Sure. So I'll start with the STEM Nights and Marbles. Those are a little bit um, more simple, I guess, to explain. So for STEM Nights, we had a group of engineering ambassadors which is an organization that I worked with through our College of Engineering. And we would take about once a month, um, around 15 to 20 engineering students, and we'd go to different elementary and middle schools. And we would put on basically a science fair, but each station was a different engineering um, activity. And through that activity, we were able to probe the students and be able to talk them through like aerodynamics, buoyancy, and these concepts that you see every day, but you might not know the mathematical or the um, scientific reason behind. And the Marbles Children's Museum was very similar. Um, We would go about once a month to the Marbles Children's Museum downtown Raleigh, and we would set up these activities. And again, just have students and children kind of come through, and we would explain um, different engineering concepts through really fun hands-on activities to get the students involved and really engaged. So was that during like the school time, like a regular school day or is that weekends or evenings? Just curious on when that action, those events uh, happened. Yeah. So the STEM nights were usually on Thursday nights after school. Um, So it was, they call them family nights. So all of the families were invited with their students to their elementary or middle school. So younger siblings, older siblings were welcome to come as well. And we were really able to reach a lot of students that way. The Marbles Children's Museum, on the other hand, were usually Sunday afternoons. So the museum typically was pretty busy on the weekends. So we would get a lot of traffic flow and a lot of children coming through. Okay, cool. Now, what what else? What other hobbies? That sounds like some great stuff there. Anything You mentioned you love to play a, a, a heart for music. So anything you'd like to share there? <laughs> yeah, so I played the viola, and I played in the Raleigh Civic Symphony while I was on campus. Um, And again, that was just a really wonderful way to meet people outside of engineering, meet people in community, um, other people who absolutely love music as much as I do. A great networking, but also relaxing time. You know, a way to challenge myself outside of math and science. Right. And I also, yeah, so it's really important to have those outlets, uh, no matter what you decide to study or or what career path you're in. Uh I also run a lot, so I love being outside and just enjoying nature. Okay, so you're you're running, you're playing music. How long have you been playing music? I started when I was five, so I've been playing for quite a while now. Okay, very good. That's, well, that is awesome. And Lauren, we love to take these episodes and to share a little bit about the, uh, our families and things like that. Anything you'd like to share for our listeners about your family? Sure. So my dad was also an NC State engineering graduate. So he was one of the people who inspired me to go to NC State and study um, within a STEM field. My mom went to the University of Georgia. She studied marketing. And my brother is finishing up his biomedical degree, um, biomedical sciences at Liberty University in Virginia. So we've all went to school kind of very spread out, but it's been wonderful sharing some of those common college memories with one another and, and being able to talk about the similarities and the differences between our experiences at school. 
So you have the, the wolf pack, you have the Georgia dogs and the flames all under one house. Uh, right. How about your, uh, your dad from, from the time he went to NC state to, to where you just finished yourself? What, what was similar? Um, I would definitely say from the things that he is, talked about and kind of reminisced over is the NC State culture. It's always been one really big family, and that's something that we really pride ourselves on and something that you'll hear almost every first-year student. If you ask them why they chose NC State, 99% of them will say the family atmosphere or the community atmosphere. And so that was one of the biggest things that I think he instilled in me that that was what the campus stands for. And then as I was in high school and I was touring different schools, you can really tell a difference between NC State and maybe some of the other schools just through those first interactions on how big of a family the campus actually is. Very cool. Well, Lauren, I have really enjoyed this conversation. And and I I think you just your story, the the things you're talking about, you're inspiring people. I know you're probably inspiring some, some, some young listeners out there that they are thinking about engineering, and we love to get to this on Eco Ask Why. We, we like to we save the why towards the end, typically. So, Lauren, why do you enjoy the path you're on, and what's, what's driving you? I absolutely love being able to wake up in, every day and know that the work and the time that I'm putting into the projects that I'm working on is directly impacting people. And so knowing that really motivates me to always put my best foot forward, always make sure that the work I'm doing is to the best of my abilities. That way, I'm never negatively impacting someone as far as I can tell. So kind of as that common saying goes, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Link, And I really try hard not to drag the team down, but to always be able to edify it and bring it forward. Well, Lauren, no doubt you're going to continue to do that for the rest of your career. Uh, I would love to have, if we when we get to the the five-year mark on Eco Ask Why. I want to bring you back. I want to hear about all the things that you've conquered, all the awesome things, that, the projects and uh, opportunities that you've had, because I know they are coming, and I'm so excited for you, and I cannot thank you enough for taking the time with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's been really fun. Absolutely, and uh, just wish you nothing but the best. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.